Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. In the maqam of Sayyidina Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan al Awliya, Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, the wazirs of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, the Nawab and deputies of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. And we pray that Allah dress us from their blessings and from their light and that their isharats and guidance come into our hearts and the purpose in life to be with a, a living guide that the coordinates come again everyone to their degree live from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that the reality of hadith to bring people to an understanding, to bring people to an evidence. And for awliyaullah and those whom are connected with awliyaullah that Sayyidina Muhammad is a live communication. That was the whole purpose of their training, their tafakkur, their contemplation is that they have a live feed coming from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum that every amr and order from Allah is going to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad only. That nobody hears what Sayyidina Muhammad no angel and no prophet. That the amount of frequency and energy and qudra is what we understand from the isharat and the command. Means that that command Allah describes that I, any command I, I was to give, if it went to a mountain because we're insan we don't understand the grandeur. So Allah gives us relative to our existence. So you look at Mount Everest or there's mountains even higher now they understood but even Mount Everest. Allah said, on this mountain if I sent my talk onto it, it would be like dust. And we know that the mountains, they are the pegs of this earth. They keep the earth from violently shaking and rolling. So we call those the awtad. They are the pegs that hold firm the earth. Those mountains from Holy Qur'an are also awliya. When Allah giving reference to these mountains, it's to confirm that, I don't speak to any of you except that I speak to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So anyone, they say in spirituality that you can talk to God all you want but when God talks to you, you're crazy, right? You can talk to, to Allah all you want. But if you start telling me Allah talking to you, you're crazy. You don't have the ability to contain that might and that majesty. There may be inspirations coming to you but many degrees of separation are coming to you. And what you may be perceiving as God talking to you. Because everything from Allah Almighty this is the reality of tawheed. When we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah this is the first usul but usul that they only understand from the maqam of sharia. But la illallah what is it from tariqah, from marifah, from haqiqah, from azimah. Each level of that usul has infinite levels of understanding. They come and say, oh these things are these shirk. Again crazy mentality, you didn't even understand this kalima tawheed from usul of sharia and they're teaching you from marifan haqiqa that this same la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah sallallahu is an understanding of energy that never la ilaha illallah will sum it as Allah, never Allah's energy can come to you if you're ahl tawheed. That's the first level of asul at level of marifa. When somebody says, is this shirk? These people are crazy, they don't even understand what's being taught to you. 
This kalima at the level of, of marifah and haqiqah is teaching you that no power can reach to anywhere on this universe except that it moves from La ilaha illallah hu wow to meme of Muhammadun Rasulullah That is also for you to understand La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyu nabiyyin there is no help and no quwwa. If the quwwa can't reach you except through Sayyidina Muhammad how the hawla are going to reach you? Allah just saying, there no help and no power. So many of these people they translate, there's no help and no power except in Allah So you call upon Allah Yes, that's definite but Allah when He wants you to pass kindergarten, you start to go towards Maqam al-Iman and Maqam al-Iman Allah will show you what He loves. Someone posted something very nice says, if you love somebody you don't take them to your business and show them, here look my business, there's all these businesses I own. When you love somebody you take them to what you love because that's, that's what you cherish and you share that what you cherish with people. Allah when He loves you, He doesn't teach you about the plants and the trees and say, look at all these universes I own and look at all of these. When He truly loves you and the station of marifah begins to open, He teaches you about Muhammadun Rasulullah Look, look at the treasure. I made this treasure and look at all that is hidden within it of His reality. And that's how then awliyaullah are being taught. That la hawla wa la quwwata, there's no help. And they understood quwwa is a power qaf al Qur'an and Majeed. Qur'an and Majeed is flowing through manzil al Qur'an, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad It is the center of power, the heart of Prophet is the wire for the universe. And the hawla and help can never reach you if the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is not upon you reaching to you. Means not even the other Prophets of Allah will extend their hand if not for the order of Sayyidina Muhammad go to your nation reach to them. All by the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad because they know the adab. They know the adab that what's flowing to them they're holding to the hand of Prophet When did they do that? In Israhi wal Maraj. When did they take their bayah to complete their deen and their faith to Allah Why Sayyidina Muhammad had to go to Jerusalem? Because he had to complete their faith. They had to take their bayah in initiation. That all their deen and all the religions they established was in the agency and prophecy of Sayyidina Muhammad to complete their faith. They had to take their bayah initiation so that real hawla and quwwah would be reaching to them and from them to their nations. So they teach these usul at levels far higher than the kindergarten understanding so that people can reach to their understanding, reach to the power, reach to the reality. If we don't understand where this power is emanating from, we don't know where to plug in. It's imagine you have a, 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 a mystical house and you have to plug in to get some power and you don't understand where the circuit is. And you search all day long thinking you're just plugged in, you say, no, no, there's a circuit, plug into it. So manifest to come and teach people, rise above kindergarten, now enter into the way of rijal, the mature men and women in the way of Allah which they understood they want to reach to Allah's power. So then they must have a connection with Sayyidina Muhammad And by means of that connection hadith become live and living for them. They use the hadith as a dalil for other people. But their isharat is not coming from that, from that which is on paper. The sharat is coming from the live and living heart of Sayyidina Muhammad They merely use what was on paper for a proof and evidence for you to believe. They say, oh where is that in the hadith? 
Here it is in the hadith. But they're not reading the hadith to find out what's happening tomorrow. Otherwise why would they have the, the living personality of Sayyidina Muhammad that their heart is all their life they're connecting to but they're picking up something written. So we'll ignore the one whom is alive and in the present and we're going to read from something? There's not the adab and the understanding. So what's written they give as dalil for people, see, see this is what Prophet was saying. But the isharat and commands and orders are coming again to their own degree, some very high, some just entering. So then this tafakkur is what Allah releasing to understand the house of Allah These lataif on how to understand, how to reach to the house of Allah Tafakkur is how to open your communication channels with a heavenly broadcasting network. What is being sent out from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to every angel, to every jinn, to every Buddha, Nunjaba, Nuqab, Awtad, Wal Akhyar, all of these categories of rijal, all their signals coming from this radio station, tafakkur is now how to connect, how to negate myself, how to negate my thinking how to empty my cup of my thoughts. As soon as you start to dialogue with us, you'll begin to understand our personality. When you begin to email with us, you'll begin to understand our personality. Don't confuse yourself thinking that you're emailing an imam at a masjid, no offense to imams at masjids. But you, you can say all the things you want with those imams and I don't know if you get replies or not. Once you start to interact with us, you'll see the flavor and how we communicate. We don't deal with people who want to teach us anything. That you ask a question according to Imam Ali Salam, you ask a question to understand and knowledge, not to challenge. So it's never I'm going to ask a question to challenge you, is this, this, is this, because you already show the offensive nature of your character. You ask a shaykh that is this a shirk, you're asking him is he like a, a buffoon, He's a, he doesn't know anything and he would be teaching you that which is haram. So you already established the relationship or lost the relationship. You go to a, a cardiologist's office and the person is from Harvard, he graduated from top of his school and say, I, I want to know did you study in Mexico and are you a real doctor? You see all the degrees on the wall, you will establish the problem with that, that, that interview is not going to go very well. That's not the way in the adab but you didn't know it doesn't matter so that's why then the tariqah comes to teach you. You may not get a, a very easy reply from Yahya. So he may postpone the reply or give you something a little bit short to train you from a distance. That when coming to this door empty your head. If your head has been working and everything is great, please leave this broadcast and don't email us. It's working for you, what you got to change it. But when you agree to yourself, like the anta subhanika ini kuntum min mean, that I am verily an oppressor to my Lord, we want those. We want those the way that we came, that I verily, Ya Rabbi, I'm an oppressor to myself. And I've done everything wrong and if you leave everything to me I will destroy everything and myself most definitely. Those are the door. They come with, I'm nothing, teach me. They come hungry because they feed you from the best of what they have. They don't give you the scraps. They give you the best of what they have means from what Allah gave them of treasures in their heart they're feeding you. All they ask is come as a yatim to the table, come as an orphan, come as somebody who's hungry that you're, I haven't eaten for, for years, I've been sitting with these people who teach me about wudu, I haven't eaten for <laughs> years spiritually, teach me something, teach me something good. Is that an Iranian song? 
Because Adam was singing that earlier. I mean, there's a whole adab of how to approach this reality is that I'm coming hungry, I want to learn. And uh, in this process of learning, we will deprogram you from bad characteristics and bad understanding. That to have doubt and to have to whisperings and conspiracies of, of this being shirk, this being innovation, these are all a madhab that will be disappearing very soon and its people will be disappearing soon. This way of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, this way of Sayyidina Muhammad first, that now coming through the gate is Sayyidina Mahdi salam, is a way of muhabbat, is a way of realities, a way of, of connection, a way of taskiyah and purification to have good character, have good understanding, to understand this magnificent status of Sayyidina Muhammad and that he didn't have fear of shirk for his nation, he had fear of hidden shirk. Hidden shirk and the most powerful hidden shirk is placing judgment and making yourself a partner with Allah It's not worshipping something. Prophet if you read your hadith, Prophet said, no I don't fear for my nation the outward shirk that they're going to make statues and worship men and worship people. We're bowing down to a house of stones. If, if Prophet feared that he would have demolished the Kaaba. Hello? We're in the middle of uh, Mecca, there's a house of stones that men built and we're bowing down. If Prophet feared shirk, he would have said, don't bow down, lest you begin to worship these stones. But he said, I don't fear that for my nation because they're not foolish. They know that Allah's not there. They're bowing down to the respect and azimah of Allah That their prayer and their salah is in their heart, it's just a unified direction. But what I do fear is a hidden shirk. Hidden shirk is the one who makes himself with a small chair like Allah and comes and begins to judge like Allah The characteristic most guarded and most feared is judgment. Allah's might and majesty that you have to fear is judgment, judgment day. Why do we fear judgment day? Because Allah is going to place an authority and say, who did right and who did wrong? That's the most feared characteristic of Allah that how is Allah going to judge me? So imagine then the biggest shirk is to make a chair, a small throne for yourself and say, I'm going to also now be co-partner and judge people. That's hidden shirk, shirk al-khafi. The hidden shirk is to judge Allah's creation. Well, they look at you and say, what are you doing? How are you possibly judging my creation? You don't know yourself and what's in front of your nose. How do you know the intention of that servant? How do you know the destiny of that servant? How do you know what's written for that servant? At what point they're to believe or at what point their belief is going to turn to disbelief? So we don't enter into the world of judgment. We leave Allah to judge His creation and we teach a path of muhabbat and love. Who comes, we love them, who goes, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah's peace be upon you. It's not for us to judge who came and who went. So all our life is this teaching. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and the immense responsibility for tafakkur and contemplation. That we want a live connection, we want to understand what's happening. The world is becoming ever more darker. A lot more darkness is closing in and draping this earth. We want an inner signal and an inner light within our hearts, inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. 
with a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly. Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.